G'day, g'day, my name is Mark Dana. I build stuff out of pallet wood timber and recycled timber. This one's coffee table, here we go. Okay, kicking off another project this morning. This one's gonna be a coffee table with a slab top inspired by the look of my longboard, named Longy Mick Longboard. So saying that, I'm gonna use up all this scrap wood timber, which is how I made the longboard. Uh, try and use as much of this as possible um, to get the job done. So I've got heaps of off cuts, but what I'm gonna do is go through and find as much color as possible. I want heaps of contrast, heaps of variation. Uh, I shouldn't have a drama, I have tons of it. And like most of my builds, step one is generally ripping all the timber down into a similar width on the table saw. Uh, from there with this one, I'm then gonna resaw a heap of that timber. I wanna get a different variation in thickness um, rather than just having that very stock standard sort of pallet thickness. Plus I've got a couple other random chunks of wood and I'm gonna send those through for a bit of resaw action as well. Once I've done that, I'll just sort it out, mix it up, make it look as random as possible. And um, then we'll get started on gluing things up. Now I do show this process in pretty much all my videos, but I will just point out again that I use a very cheap PVA glue when I'm making these slabs. I'll save the good stuff uh, for the important parts that I glue up. I've got these chunky beasts of timber, which were also thrown out in the back of Bunnings. They are a, a quite a large rectangle profile, so I'm going to resaw those down into a nice square profile. It's also cleaning up all the faces of the timber because I have to leave the frame of this build raw and the customer is going to take care of that and I'll take care of the top. And in the interest of using up even more timber, I've busted out the straight edge jig um, so I can use up a bit more of this timber for the framing process. I'll now whip the ends off my slab so I don't spend a heap of time cutting everything to the same length because it's just a waste of time. Just glue it all up, then quickly whip it off before you can send it through your thicknesser or router or however you're going to flatten the slab in the end. Uh, I just found this way the most uh, time efficient. Right, slabs flattened. I'm now going to cut them all into a nice square profile, which are going to be what I call my pallet bricks. I'm going to do a bit of a brick laying technique or Lego for big kids to make this slab top. So I'll just rip all those down to the same size. I'll then uh, take them onto the table saw cross cut sled and square them up. Saying that, they weren't very square, so off camera I end up using my new Bosch Mitosaur, which is an absolute weapon, and I squared those ones up nicely from there. Okay, so the plan here is to try out some new joinery. So no, I didn't invent it. Uh, I'm gonna use like a combination of a half lap, and then I'm gonna create somewhat of a homemade mortise. So without having to physically cut the mortise and tenon, I'll, I'll show you more as we progress. But it, for me, it's, Avoiding having to use a hammer and a chisel other than to clean up just like here. Um, it's about using the table saw, using the tools I have to make stuff efficiently. So uh, just watch along. So basically the cross members, they're gonna slot into their own mortise or tenon, whatever it is, if you will. But pictures tells a thousand words, so just stay tuned for a bit longer. Okay, I am using the table saw to cut all of these half laps, but I am sneaking up on them, taking my time, because I want it to be nice and tight. Um, so here we go. Here's my first couple of half laps. Uh, there's the half lap that slots in, and now I've created my somewhat of a mortise and tenon for the cross piece to slot in. So what I'm after is to create that sort of setback profile and for every corner to have a decent join on it. And I think I've achieved this. I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out. Uh, it's efficient and it looks pretty cool. So like I say a fair bit, I do like to dodge the old hammer and chisel uh, other than for cleaning things up. But what I'm doing, I am learning some joinery. I'm trying new things. I'll eventually get to some of that traditional stuff. But at the moment, this works. I'm happy to continue. Okay, I have done a dry fit of this. It's all looking pretty smicko. I'm just gonna glue up the two longitudinal sides of this frame initially. 
I'll come back the next day and we'll get cracking on the rest. Here's another quick view uh, just to show you what I am trying to achieve. Uh, so joinery, joinery in both directions. Okay, so dry fit is complete. We're gonna go ahead with the glue up of the rest of the frame. Um, it all goes to plan, just a spoiler alert. Um, however, I will use some pipe clamps just to pull this down. Rather than beating the snot out of it with a mallet, I'm just gonna slowly clamp it down into position check it's all square, and then I'll do a final clamp up, and uh, she's apples, she's good to go. Check square, 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 check square. Okie dokie, so I can now clamp it up. I'll probably check it square again. All right, so we're gonna move on to the shelf down the bottom, which will be the same profile, a vertical profile with some basically slats across the bottom. So I've just got to set up a bit of a stop block here. My stop block doesn't run all the way into the miter saw. So I'll just clamp on a bit of stock and then that'll do the job for all my repeatable cuts. I think there's about 15 odd pieces. So this works nicely. Okay, so I don't like doing maths, so I basically chucked all the pieces in and then I've grabbed a piece of timber as a spacer and seen if that works out nice and evenly. It probably took only a couple of goes before I got it within a couple of mil for that final piece. So then I'll just mark it out with a pencil, uh, ready for later on. It's me giving them a quick sand. Again, I'm not finishing this project. It's gonna be left raw, okay? All right, I've gotta talk fast. Okay, pocket holes are going in, as well as gluing and clamping these bottom uh, slats. I am just gonna throw a pocket hole on the underside of the table for just in case. Probably totally unnecessary, but underkill is overrated, as they say. And here's me putting in some screws into pocket holes. Very exciting. Uh, I don't use the proper Craig screws because I'm a tight ass, side note. Okie dokie, uh, here we go. So a bit of brick laying with my slab bricks. So the slabs themselves, uh, I use the cheapy PVA glue, which again, works just fine. Uh, now I'm using some Type 1 3 and using the principle of the strength of bricks. I'm basically just gonna glue it all together. Um, mixes up the pattern and it is very, very strong. Okay, I'm doing a slightly different clamp up than I've done in the past. I like to try some different things and I think this way is the way to go. Uh, but what's important is getting that um, clamping direction from both sides to pull everything in nice and square. So once it's time to run it through the thicknesser, you won't run into any dramas. Here we go, thicknesser. Oh, I love this machine. It is the best. No mess, and I don't sweat my ass off. Routing the tops off like I used to. Okay, I'm just gonna glue the final two slabs together. Yes, you could do some biscuits, jab, dowel, whatever, but again, there's so much gluing surface, it, it doesn't need it. But if you want to, go for gold. Same deal though, get those clamps on both sides of your slabs, uh, and then I just make sure that it hasn't pulled up in any direction. So throw the spirit level on and just give it a good check as you go, um, so you don't come into drama when it's time to stick it on top of the table and it's all out of whack. But mine is good to go. All right, so we're really getting close now. Quick sand. Um, this one I'm finishing with an oil-based poly, a clear coat. 
um, because again, that's what long emit longboard looked like. I used that all both uh, because skateboards needed copper beading, but it does give a very different color to the water-based one I normally use, but it does make a heap of those darker colors really pop. So uh, this looks pretty cool. And it's just about time to do some more work on the frame. Okay, I'm going with these little figure eight clips for attaching the frame uh, to my slab top. I saw this done on Robin Lewis Makes on his channel. Uh, he's just made an exceptional kitchen island bench. So I'm stealing that idea because it is fantastic uh, and it's nice and easy. So you just um, route out a little groove on the frame, screw in the figure eight, throw the slab top on, screw it in and you're done. Love it. Works pretty awesome. Got the exciting music on now, we're getting near the finish line. Uh, I am on Instagram, so I pretty much post something every day. I show a lot of these steps uh, well before the YouTube video comes out, but I do break it down into more user-friendly chunks for Instagram. So come over there, have a laugh, have a chat. Always up for some messages and advice, and feel free to send me your advice if you see me doing something stupid. Anyway, thanks for watching.